What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. I just got finished streaming the Nintendo Indie World 818 2020 at 9 a.m. showcase, the Nintendo Nindie showcase, and it was okay. It wasn't terrible, but it was missing some key heavy hitters from the indie scene that a lot of people were looking forward to. What this ended up being was just a smorgageboard of a bunch of random indie games that didn't really catch my eye, but ultimately may have some diamonds in the rough. Smash! They kicked the event off with a game from Super Giant Games, uh, the company that also made Bastion, called Hades. And initially I thought it was just going to be a video of the game, but then they actually showed some gameplay of it. Basically a roguelike dungeon crawler. It's not a terrible looking game. It kind of gives the vibes of a Diablo style uh, action adventure game, but ultimately a little bit more puzzle-esque and action adventure with it. One that is on my radar out of all of the games that they went through here. Hypnospace Outlaw. It's already been out for a couple of years on Steam. Just looks overcomplicated and not that fun. I mean, <laughs> It just looks like work. When I was doing the live stream, I'm like, this this just looks like homework. I don't I don't want to play a game that feels like homework. I want to play a game that's fun and enjoyable and exciting. Maybe this is. It just feels like it's uh it's a little too cumbersome, too much going on with it, and ultimately it just left me feeling like, meh, there's so many games out there. Why should I focus on caring about a game like this? But there is a demo available today. Maybe if I find that oodles of free time that I don't have in my life, I will try it out, but I got a feeling I'm not going to. Then they moved on to Spirit Farer, a game, or Spirit Farer, whatever, a game that we've been talking about for a while now. Another one that stood out as potentially fun game. And the surprise with this one was it got announced it's out later today, so people can buy it basically now on the Nintendo eShop. We're going to talk about the eShop later in this, but I want to highlight some of the games that did catch my eye in this. Like I said, it wasn't a terrible direct all around. There were some highlights to it, but even the highlights didn't reach the height that I had hoped like some of these previous indie titles in the past had. Ultimately, though, Spirit Spiritfarer may be a hidden gem among all the games they go through. And they moved on to was Garden Story. I don't see the reason why this game exists. There are so many games that do this Harvest Moon style already that it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I'd rather just spend my time in Animal Crossing or Harvest Moon or even Stardew Valley. Ultimately, though... For those people that love that kind of game, here's another one for you. This is the thing that I had the problem with the Indie Direct, the, the showcase of these games. is By and large, I could go through the rest of these two, but by and large, most of them just looked very generic games that already exist, doing what has already been done before with just more pixelated graphics. And ultimately... That's great for people who want more of that in their life, but I feel like there's already such a gigantic surplus of pixelated indie games that do what better indie games have done before in the past, that there's no reason to spend your money on these games. Specifically games like that one. Maybe it sounds like I'm being too harsh on it, but I'm just being real. <laughs> That's all I know how to do. Uh, Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero coming out in 2021. Okay. I, I guess. I mean, to me, it kind of looks like The Outer Worlds. Not really anything that I'm that interested in, but I guess, again, if you love The Outer Worlds, which had a terrible port on the Switch, by the way, there's more of that kind of style of game coming in 2021. That said, Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero coming 2021. They didn't specify if that's a bundle or if you're buying them individually. I don't know, but again, I don't really care either because it didn't really strike me as something that I'd be spending my time with. But that game's coming out if you're interested. This one here, this is Takashi and Hiroshi, available later today. This caught my eye as something unique, but not a game that I would just jump and spend my money on based off of what they showed in the trailer. Apparently, you create the 
characters that you fight in the dungeon and then see if you can get past them. Almost like a very basic take on RPG Maker. So definitely one that I'm interested in checking out. One of the biggest ones that stood out to me was Raji, an ancient epic. That's this game here that apparently it focuses on the folklore of ancient India, an action adventure game. Reminded me a lot of Mulaka and that style of game focusing on the lore of a culture. I loved Mulaka. I have a feeling this is a action adventure Zelda-like type indie style game that I would also enjoy. So I probably will be checking this one out. But that's basically it. I guess you could skip through a bunch of these other games. They go over Bear and Breakfast, which kind of looks like uh, a Sims with bears. I guess that's the way I would, <laughs> I would I would take a look at that one. It didn't really catch my eye, but I mean, for those who really want a Sims game with bears, okay. <laughs> a short hike. This is a, a, it reminded me of like a 3DS style of graphics. I don't like this graphic style of game. Maybe that's just me, but it's just Everything blends together and it's blurry. It, it kind of hurts my eyes after a while. But it's available today for people who are interested in... I don't even know what it was. Again, the, these these trailers don't really show off what the games do and the mechanics of them as much as I would like. Like this one too. This is probably the, the worst trailer that I saw. I have no idea what the hell this game even entails or what it's about called Card Shark, coming in 2021. The only reason I'm interested in this is because Devolver Digital signed on to publish it. And every time Devolver Digital wants to publish a game, I trust their opinion. They pick good games to pay to publish. And this one, I would imagine, is worth your time just based off of that. But it's, like I said in my live stream, I'm not going to pay money for this. Like, if, if Devolver sent me a review code, I'd check it out and let you guys know if it's worth your time. But based off of what they showed, I would not be spending my money on it right now. Then they talked about Torchlight 3, which I believe has already been on Steam for a while now, which is an issue with a ton of these games. They've been on Steam for years, and yet these indie directs act like they are brand new games that have never been out before. This is Torchlight 3. People that are excited about that, here you go. Another Diablo-style game for you. To me, it just feels like there's way too much going on at once, and I don't know, it's just not my style of game. But I know there's a lot of people that love Torchlight and the Torchlight series, and they swear by it, so I'm sure they'd be so ecstatic that this game is coming out in fall of 2020. Then they went over a game called Manifold Garden, which I... I, I don't know, like... It kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Superliminal, which is a game that I reviewed earlier. Definitely check that out because Superliminal is a fantastic indie game along the lines of like a portal uh, puzzler type of game. This reminded me of that with, to be honest, a much worse art style. I don't know. I don't, I don't love the art style just based off of what I saw, but it might be a fun puzzle game, and it's something that I may check out. But again, not a game that I'd spend money on. If they sent me the game to review it, I'd check it out and let you guys know what I thought. But that's the problem that I'm having with this, is there should be games that you watch and you're like, I have to pick that up because it looks awesome. It has this mechanic that I just can't say no to, or the storyline that is just completely engaging, which is hard to do in like a two-minute uh, highlighted trailer, but my point is it's happened before. I saw games like Axiom Verge. I saw games like Hollow Knight. I saw games like Rogue Legacy in the past just from trailers, and I'm like, yep, I'm picking that game up. None of that happened with this. That's that's my issue. Like, I'm not saying it was a bad Nintendo Direct. I'm saying that there was nothing in it that really blew me away. Evergate looks good. It looks kind of like a Celeste mixed with Ori, if I had to pick two games for it to match with, where it's like a puzzle where you have to jump on platforms and get around with the art style of Ori. This was the grand finale for the Nintendo Direct, is going over Evergate, and they highlighted this for a while. They had the developers talking about it, showing the game off, and because they spent so much time highlighting this, it really made me think that this game is something special. Not to mention, Nintendo put it at the end of the event. 
kind of like the Big Bang showing off what they got, starting it off with Hades to kick things off as a big game, and then closing it with Evergate before going to a sizzle reel and then ending it with an untitled Goose Game multiplayer that I'll talk about in a second. But as far as Evergate is concerned, this one, Raji, Spiritfarer, and Hades are the games that I'm taking from this as games that I might pick up eventually down the road, assuming they get good reviews. Because, let's face it, we don't all have time to sit around and play every single one of these games that comes out. So it all comes down to what the reviews say of them. There were a lot of games they went over, and I don't want to come off as overly negative with this because it doesn't mean it was bad. It just means there was nothing that actually stood out like I was hoping it would. And like I've said before, they missed hitting on some of the titles that a lot of people in the indie scene were hyped to hear more about. It doesn't really strike me as anything that I have to get right away or pay full price for, or in this case, they're doing a sale on these games. So potentially you could get these games at a discount right now if you feel so inclined to buy them right away. Then they go over a sizzle reel of a bunch of other indie games that have been talked about for what feels like forever. But here's my issue. I keep going back to this. My problem with, with the entire situation is they didn't talk about any big indie games that people were hopeful coming to the Switch. So I might sound like I'm being overly critical, but ultimately I'm just being real. Like, it was not a bad event. It was just nothing that blew me away. I guess I guess that's what I'm getting at. We, we talked about this... Uh, in the chat and basically we, we all uh for the most part everyone was saying yeah it feels like it's like a a six out of ten if you say five is the average i would give this presentation a six out of ten which is slightly above average but nothing that's like oh my god yes that was an amazing direct no this is a uh, very forgettable forgettable direct i would say incomplete i'd give it an eye for incomplete because it's missing so many of the games that people know are being made that they didn't talk about here that people want to see more of and i know people say oh these are for highlighting games people don't know about that can work too but none of the games they highlighted that I didn't know about really caught my eye. I guess that's what I'm getting at. And it's happened before, which is why I know that I'm not just being hypercritical of this. Just being real. Now, ultimately, they ended it with Goose Game coming uh, September 23rd with a two-player update. Which is pretty awesome because my son loves playing Untitled Goose Game. So, yes, I'll be definitely playing that with him. But that's a game that's already out. It's a two-player update that we have to wait a month for, for some reason. But whatever. Um, ultimately, what I want to focus on with this video, I know it's getting towards the end of it. I don't want to talk forever. But the Nintendo eShop needs a complete overhaul. With so many of these games going up what seems like weekly. And they all just end up being a bunch of written words just showing up on the screen. And you forget about them two weeks later and people don't follow up on them. The only way you know about these games is when YouTubers like myself tell people, Hey, I played this game. You should play it. But right now, that's no, there's no other way to find out what games are actually worth your time on the eShop. What I would say Nintendo should do is break it down into folders. Have separate sections for people to select. Triple A titles. Indie, which would be broken down into two categories. Indie AA and Indie Single A, where AA would be the high-quality games, like Untitled Goose Game, uh, Hollow Knight, or Axiom Verge, or even Hades, or uh, Spiritfarer, or Raji. And then the single-A ones would be more like mobile phone port games and the junk ones, the crappy ones. And also do away with the whole sales, like one-cent sales, just so they go on the uh, highest selling list so that they get promoted. It's a, it's a back alley, back end way to get acknowledgement on these games. I don't know. I, I feel like that's the biggest issue with all of this. These games might be good, but they're just, they're going to get lost in the mess on the eShop. I already know that. And ultimately, the only way people are going to find out about these is by watching YouTubers who play the games and say, yeah, this is worth your time or no, it's not. I get a lot of game codes sent to me. I have a lot of publishers asking me to review the games and it's hard. It's hard because some of the games actually suck. Like they're garbage games and I don't cover them because I don't want to make a, a eight minute videos 
crapping on a game that somebody worked hard on. It's just, it's not my, my jam. So I try to focus on talking about the games that I love. So for the most part, no promises in the future. I might, I might crap on a game in the future, but I like to focus on the games that I'm enjoying. And that's the problem is some of these indie games, just because it's a game that's made, doesn't make it a good game. And I think that's the problem with a lot of indie games this day and age. Anyways, that's my initial thoughts on this Nindy's Direct Indie World. It wasn't terrible. It could have been a hell of a lot better. I'd be very interested to hear where you guys stand on this entire thing. If there were games that stood out to you that I'm definitely not giving them the credit you feel like they deserve. Or if you feel like I'm pretty much on point. I'm going to leave it there. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Smash.